So before you watch this, you have to complete Undertale or at least pirate it. You have to play the pacifist route and the genocide route. You also have to finish Deltarune chapter 1 and 2. Here's a recap for chapter 1. You also have to know who Gaster is. Here's a video summary about him. Gaster is the guy who speaks at the character creation sequence at the beginning of Deltarune. Before I begin, you should take into account the way Gaster speaks. You acknowledge the possibility of pain and seizure. Usually he speaks in full sentences, but periodically he pauses like this. Let this shape its mind as your own. Always be on the lookout for this. If a character speaks like this, usually full sentences with periodic pauses in between, then it's probably related to Gaster. All of the theories in this video are included not because of how certain they are, but because of how epic they are. Multiple ideas here have kept me up at night for each one of them alone. One dosage is enough to do the same to you. You will receive many doses in this video, certain to be lethal. Many people are already well aware of this, but the reason Chris pulls out the soul isn't because they're going crazy. It's because you, the player, are controlling the soul. So it's not Kara that's possessing them or anything, it's them rejecting your control. Also, Chris is in the night, which will be made very clear soon. The idea is that characters like Spanton and Jebel went insane because they learned that they were in a video game. But I don't think that there will be any sort of plot related to that concept. Take Earthbound for example. In the end, the characters pray to gain the power needed in order to defeat the final boss. In the end, you, the player, pray for them to win. That's how the final boss is defeated. Deltrian will break the fourth wall, however not in the everything is just a game, we're just lines of code type of way. Deltrian will be established as its own world. The player, or as some characters will probably call in future chapters, the Anomaly, is an entity that exists beyond their world, beyond time. This entity that exists beyond time is needed in order to get things right. This will be important later. Is Chris a new character, or is Chris just a Deltarune version of Frisk? Chris has the same skin color as Frisk, not Kara. Chris has red eyes. You might assume that this is a reference to Frisk being possessed by Kara in the end of Undertale. If you do a genocide route, then do a pacifist route after. At the end of the pacifist route, this happens. The cheeks obviously imply that Chris is now possessed by Kara, but Kara doesn't have red eyes. Frisk's eyes are supposedly closed throughout the entire game except for this point. Frisk simply always had red eyes, and here they're open because Kara possessed them. Chris wearing Kara's clothes is simply just because they both have Toriel as their parent. Deltarune is Undertale, but its letters are rearranged. Chris is also Frisk, but the letters are rearranged. However, it's impossible to make a rearrangement of Frisk that actually passes as a name, so the F has to be taken out. In conclusion, it's more likely that Chris is Deltarune's version of Frisk. Ralze has always been mysterious. There are many secrets about Ralze that I'll explain in this video, but here I'll show just how obvious that Ralze knows about the player's involvement. Ralze actually named the castle town after your real name. This is what the NPC says. Also this. Ralzi says the prophecy is foretold by time and space. Gaster was shattered across time and space. So Ralzi is involved with Gaster, and Gaster is clearly involved with the player. Ralzi made a risky deal with Gaster, one that may or may not live up to his expectations. Monsters cannot bleed. They don't even have enough physical matter to eat real food. They have to eat monster food which gets directly converted into energy. Darkeners, however, know about blood. Dark Fenons are a byproduct of determination. Using determination, inanimate objects are brought to life. Since Darkeners are made of determination, it makes sense that they can bleed. Not actual blood, but determination. The Dark Fenon is made of determination. Determination flows onto objects. Objects come to life via determination. Sound familiar? In Undertale, Flowey was an inanimate object brought to life with determination. However, there's a difference between the way it was done with Flowey and how it was done with average darkeners. But first, let's look at Ralze. Ralze can travel from the pure dark world to the computer dark world. This is not something a normal darkener can do. I 
I think these horns Toriel mentioned became Ralsei. It's pretty obvious why I believe this. If Ralsei was actually just an item Chris was holding, then we would know because it would be an item in Chris's inventory. Fire was created when Azrael's dust was spread across an inanimate object, and then injected with determination. That's why Flyer resembles Azrael, and Ralsei resembles Azrael. I believe that if there's a Darkner that is also imbued with monster dust, they have special abilities, such as being able to be in the light world. Ralsei is clearly familiar with the layout of the school. Ralsei sensed a dark presence and hurried over. I think this is actually true, but said in such a way where he doesn't explain that he went out of the pure dark world and traveled to the dark realm in the library. He doesn't turn into a statue like a normal Darkner would either. This also might be relevant if Sans is a Darkner. This part is only speculation, but what if the presumed holes in Gasser's hands are him cutting parts of his hands out and spreading his dust on possibly a jacket or a scarf? So, was Azrael dead all along? I doubt it, but Ralsei is definitely connected to Azrael in some way. Ralsei is an anagram of Azrael after all. Also, there's the issue with monsters like Flavi not being able to feel love. Hopefully, the concept of darkness made with dust gives us context on that. I am absolutely certain that dust imbued darkness will be relevant in the future chapters, and that's how we're going to get clarification on how being soulless actually affects creatures like Flowey. There is an alternative to Rousey being related to Azrael via dust, and that is if darkness have traits not limited to their objects, but by the emotional bond that the lightners make with them. As you can see in the beginning of Deltarune, Azrael has a lot of trophies and Chris has none. Maybe when Chris wore the horns as a child, that was when the idea of Rousey came from. Basically, Ralsei is who Chris wanted to be. You can see that the Titan's eyes here are familiar. These eyes are the same eyes that we see at the cliffs in Chapter 1 when we first entered the Dark World. As we know, the Dark World Ralsei is in is a pure Dark Fountain. It's said that the roaring will happen when too many Dark Fountains are opened. This is just speculation, but if anything happened to Azrael, I think this event, which I'll call the 80% roaring, would be the cause for it. In the second part of the prophecy, it says, the darkness crushed by the darkness will turn into statues. So what if the rumbling happened, but for some reason not completely like the way Ralsei described? What if the roaring turned the fountain into one of pure darkness, which crushed the original darkness from that dark world, excluding Ralsei because they're special? What if the things we interact with here aren't random? What if they're actually the darkness that turned into statues and over time they broke down? Something happened that we don't know about, and I'm sure that it's connected to Ralsei. More specifically, what made up Ralsei? There is this idea called the chess theory. Some people believe that Deltarune is a symbolic game of chess between you and Gaster. These are the chess pieces in order of how many moves they can take. Chapter 1 you fight the king. Chapter 2 you fight the queen. So the idea is in chapter 3 you fight the rook. Chapter 4 you fight the bishop. Chapter 5 you fight the knight. Chapter 6 you fight the pawn. And for chapter 7 there's no more pieces to play against. So you fight Gaster. The dogs in jail talk about something that attacked them, something merciless, to the point where Undyne seemed warm and loving. They were planning on sneaking into the big house over the holidays. This obviously is where Noelle lives. Noelle says, if I had healing magic I could make you better, then it wouldn't be just me and mom. Alpha says, it's because of the mayor there aren't any crimes. In the town hall if you talk about the mayor it says, she's very very busy preparing for the festival. So the mayor is Noelle's mom. It seems like she's a touchy subject in the family, probably because of how busy she always is. Birdly and Noelle were already studying in the library when the dark fountain opened. Chris obviously wasn't present when this happened, so Chris couldn't have done this. If you look in the closet after sealing the dark fountain, it says a large person can easily fit inside. So the knight is heavily implied to be a big monster. The knight came out of the closet and opened the dark fountain while they were studying. So later in Deltarune, it will probably turn out that the mayor is the knight. Maybe the mayor tries to complete the roaring during the festival. Ralsei fights the mayor, but there's conflict between him and Noelle because that's Noelle's mother. Noelle has to choose between the heroes or the mayor, which will probably be different depending on which route we take. Noelle had a sister named Des, who was implied to have gone missing and never came back. Maybe the reason the mayor did all of this was because they made a deal with some unknown entity in the hopes of finding Des. Let's compare this line of dialogue in Undertale to Deltarune. So Toriel in Undertale simply just uses fire magic instead of in Deltarune, where she doesn't. In fact, nobody in the light world has been seen using monster magic. 
In Undertale, the main reasons humans fought monsters is because they feared monster magic. There's no mention of this in Deltarune. There's no mention of monsters being sealed underground. There's not even a mention of humans fighting monsters. This world is the result of there never being a war between humans and monsters, because monsters in the light world don't have access to monster magic. The idea is there was a monster who managed to get seven human souls and become a god. They had a solution to the human monster war. In Undertale, humans hated monsters and started the war specifically because they had magic. So this monster, using their infinite power, sealed away all the monsters' magic capabilities, ensuring peace between humans and monsters. This is the divergence point between Undertale and Deltarune. This is what the Dark Worlds are made of, pure monster magic. So when somebody makes a dark fountain, it's like poking a hole in a water balloon, a water balloon of sealed away monster magic. And when too many holes are made, the water balloon pops. This is what we see here. I believe this entity that had the power of the seven human souls could be the angel, though it's more likely that it's some other entity that we don't know about. Regardless, I'm going to refer to whatever this is as, quote, the entity. Azrael, who also got the seven human souls at one point in Undertale, says some pretty interesting things. Let's assume the entity is a parallel to Azrael. After I defeat you and gain total control over the timeline, I just want to reset everything. Everyone's progress, everyone's memories. I'll bring it all back to zero. There's lots of hints that Deltarune is in a time loop. In Undertale, the first time you save it shows an empty name. However, if you do a reset, then your name is still in the save file until you save over it. Chris already has her name in the save file, like their progress was reset. There's also this unused dialogue in the intro of Undertale, where Susie calls out Chris's name, telling them to wake up. <laughs> This could be Chris remembering a previous timeline. Regardless of if it's the angel or something else that has put everybody in a time loop, there are many, many things that would make sense in the context of a time loop. Jevil went insane, he was holding a shadow crystal. Spamton went insane too, he was also holding this mysterious shadow crystal. They all seem to have this sort of higher knowledge, which turned them insane. Is there a correlation between these crystals and their insanity? This is where the time loop theory comes in. What if these crystals can look into previous timelines? This crystal has properties that exist beyond time. Seem says this when talking about Jevil. He started saying bizarre things that didn't completely make sense, but didn't completely not make sense either. Soon he began to see this world as a game, and everyone as its participants. Since that time, the strange words he said has stuck inside my cotton, and my view of this world has become darker yet darker. But Jebel was just a taste of what you'll face from now on. One day soon, you too will begin to realize the futility of your actions. Jebel, upon realizing that he was in a time loop, realized nothing mattered and saw everything as a game. In chapter 2, Seem says, You have collected two shadow crystals. I feel your next opponent may be. In reality, it may be impossible to win, unless you use the power of the shadow mantle. Here, it may look like an old scrap of cloth, but... I can't find it. Did somebody take it? There goes your one chance of victory. Unfortunately, without the shadow mantle, at two you may remain. Fate is approaching, and it is not on your side. This is what Toby Fox said when playing Deltarune Live. And he does just a little of the uh, Lancer. Spoilers. Cool mantle, bro. Jevil says, soon the queen returns, and hell's roar bubbles from the depths. If you had a Shadow Crystal from Jevil in a previous playthrough, then talk to Seam after only having one Shadow Crystal from Spamton but not Jevil. Seam says this. What's that? It appears you have a Shadow Crystal. Unfortunately, I believe you are missing one from your previous adventures. But are you sure? Are you sure you didn't defeat that clown? Perhaps you just haven't remembered that you had yet. That's right, as long as you ever defeated that enemy in the past, then perhaps, even now, that crystal might turn up somewhere close perhaps. If you look here, you find the Shadow Crystal. In the Genocide route, Spampton says, There will be no more miracles, no more magic. You lost it when you try to see too far. You lost it. In Undertale, when you fight Muppet, she says, The person who warned us about you offered a lot of money for your soul. They had such a sweet smile. It's strange, but I swear I saw them in the shadows, changing shape. 
There is no known character in Undertale that can change shape in the way Muffet mentioned, but I believe I know exactly who proposes to Muffet. In Undertale, Kara erases the world. The player is the only one left, in a world of nothing. Kara asks you to sell your soul to them. That way the world will be brought back. When you do that, somehow Kara is able to restore the world. This is in my opinion one of the most misunderstood parts of a story in all of gaming history. There's a link to the gameplay of what happens when you sell your soul to Kara in the description. Before you continue, it is highly recommended that you take a look at the video. A very, very close look at it. If you think about everything I told you to remember, you will realize what everybody missed. Without further ado, here's the missing piece. Interesting. You want to go back. You want to go back to the world you destroyed. That's right, it's the way they speak. That's the missing piece of the puzzle. It wasn't Kara that asked Muffet for your soul. It wasn't Kara who spoke to you. It wasn't Kara that bought your soul and restored the world. It was Gaster. That's why Gaster has this mysterious soul at the beginning of Deltarune. That's why we have the option to say, it's great to see you again, when talking to Sans. And because a soul can do this, we can assume that this soul isn't just from a genocide route, but from a previous pacifist route that was reset and a genocide route done after it. And this also has implications that the soul does have a sort of will of its own. In this context, the vessel creation sequence is different. This is obviously Gaster, as I have mentioned before. The reason Gaster can speak not in the Wingdings font is because it's a choice. It's the same way Sans can choose not to speak in the Sans font. At the end of the vessel creation sequence, Gaster is interrupted by a second person. If you look at the Deltarune vessel creation in Japanese, Gaster says the pronoun your, formerly as Anata, or Aneta. Sorry, I don't speak English. However, the second voice says the pronoun your informally as omai. Oh you know who else speaks in informal Japanese? Gaster, who you sell your soul to. This makes sense. This is an Undertale Gaster, so logically there would be a Deltarune Gaster. When we play a Deltarune, you have the option to start your playthrough at future chapters, which means even without your input, the story can progress. The choices you make are filled in on their own. I believe that these chapters aren't just randomly filled in. I believe that these are Chris's choices before you take control of them. It's just that you control later on in the story. Chris has already tried to end the time loop but they failed. This is where the theme of your choices don't matter come from. The player is an entity that exists beyond the world, beyond time. This entity that exists beyond time is needed in order to get things right. Because we have the ability to change our choices despite being in a time loop. That's why Gaster brought us into this world. I look forward to creating a new future with you. Chris might also have been notified about the time loop and the fact that they will be possessed by the player. Chris probably made a deal with Gaster that led to that point. Another case of a risky deal. Chris knowing that the player will be needed to end the time loop is probably why Chris doesn't try to stop the player from doing the genocide route. Because they believe it's necessary for the time loop to end. Toby Fox has said multiple times that Deltarune will have only one ending. I think the way we can defeat the entity is a parallel to Undertale. In Undertale, you can't get a happy ending in the neutral route because you missed something important. You have to start from the beginning and do things right in order to get to the end. I think in Deltarune, we can get three possible outcomes. One is the neutral outcome where you lose. The second one is the genocide outcome. The third one is the true outcome. You're in a loop until you break the cycle, until you get the correct ending. Therefore, there's only one ending. In the neutral route, you skip the secret bosses, you don't get the shadow crystals. This causes you to not be able to stop the entity. This is what happened to Chris. The world is looped and we have to start over from the beginning. The way to beat Deltarune is by collecting the shadow crystals. The shadow crystals are also referred to as shards. These could possibly be shards of Gaster, who was shattered across time and space. By collecting pieces of Gaster, we put Gaster back together. We make him whole again. That's the missing piece we need in order to defeat the entity. When you replay the game, you have the option to press C to skip dialogue. In chapter 1, you can go back to sleep and wake up in a dark world.
Even if you got the Shadow Crystals in a previous playthrough, you don't have to do it again and you can just focus on only the ones you have to get. Dialogue changes if you do things when you're not supposed to know how to yet. Deltarune is a game that seems you have to replay in order to complete like Undertale, though you have a lot more accessibility due to the fact that Deltarune is much longer than Undertale. So there's this machine in Undertale. It's a possibility that this machine is also in Deltarune. If there was one place I think it could be, I think it would probably be in the bunker. Bunkers are designed to protect people, which implies that something happens for the bunker to be needed later on. This machine will probably be used to go into alternate worlds. So there's this proposal. People can use this machine to escape the time loop. They can go to a world where the entity doesn't exist. However, because of the entity, monster magic was sealed away. Monster magic would remain, and humans would still hate monsters. Humans would go to war against monsters. If you stop the time loop, the machine isn't used. I think in Deltarune, the machine is used by Sans in one of the outcomes where you fail to stop the time loop. Sans bleeds, but Papyrus doesn't, so probably only Sans used the machine. During the judgement scene in Undertale, if you've already been in the game and then come back and hear the speech again, Sans mentions how you act as if you've already seen everything before, and he's always suspected something like that. He then says there's a secret code word that only he knows. And if you go back to your save and then tell him, he says, I guess you're qualified. Here's the key to my room. And somehow the key was already on your keychain. You get to Sans's room and there's nothing interesting. However, there's a silver key in the drawer. If you take it and then go to the back of the house, there's a secret room. There's a machine covered by a curtain. Looking in the drawer says, This is probably the Wingdings font, which implies that gas are created in the machine. In Undertale, there's a secret message called Entry Number 17. This was written by Gaster in the Wingdings font. Dark, darker, yet darker. The darkness keeps growing. The shadows cutting deeper. Photon readings negative. This next experiment seems... Very, very interesting. What do you two think? This could be referencing the Dark World, or Gaster trying to fix a machine. So the term, what do you two think, can mean different things. 1. Sans and Papyrus. 2. Deltarune Sans, and Undertale Sans. Or 3. Sans and Alphys. Deltarune Sans and Undertale Sans addresses the fact that there are now two Sans in the same world. So here's the story concept. In a failed route, using the machine, Sans goes to Undertale. Again, I think Papyrus stayed behind because canonically, Sans bleeds. Papyrus doesn't bleed in canon Undertale. The reason Sans left Undertale could be merely escaping for the sake of escaping, or escaping in the hopes of finding a solution and coming back after. However, the machine broke down. Undertale Sans and Deltarune Sans got to know each other and went to Undertale Gaster for help fixing the machine. Gaster along with Alphys worked with them fixing the machine. Stuff went wrong and Gaster fell into the core, being shattered across time and space. It's possible that Undertale Sans dies this way too, but I doubt it. Sans gives up on trying to go back to his world. The only thing he has left to live for is Papyrus. Papyrus is his only reason to live. There's a buttload of foreshadowing for Sans being from Deltarune, to the point where it's pretty much guaranteed. The mysterious river person says this. This is obviously Sans, and there's obviously a reason we should be aware of Sans.
The general consensus is that the red soul is the trait of determination. When we seal the fountain, this happens. There's the dark fountain and the soul goes to it. Then the soul starts emitting light. This light becomes so intense that a dark fountain is no more. There's many hints to the soul not having a trait of determination, but of light. Determination is needed to make a dark fountain though, so you do have determination. However, it's not determination from the soul. Chris pulls out the soul, and then opens the dark fountain. This means the soul isn't what has determination, it's Chris that has determination. Everybody who has a good amount of knowledge about Undertale knows that determination can allow you to persist even in situations where you'd just be dead otherwise. This is also why instead of acting the way they normally would, they're just walking around creepily. Not because they're possessed, but because in this situation they're supposed to be dead. The only thing keeping them alive being their determination. Toby Fox has already explained that Deltrune was planned when, or even before, Undertale was being created. It's obvious that everything was planned from the start. With that out of the way, let's look at a very suspicious scene in Undertale. There's a shop in Undertale, hosted by a person named Gerson. You can ask Gerson about some things. For example, what this logo means. He says the emblem predates written history, and that its original meaning has been lost in time. This emblem appears pretty much everywhere in Deltarune. The triangles below symbolize the monsters, and the wings with the circle symbolize, quote, something else. Gerson mentions how people think the winged circle symbolizes an angel. It's probably unrelated, but in Deltarune, the triangles are used to symbolize Chris, Susie, and Ralsei. Gerson says what the emblem's name is. That's the Deltarune, the emblem of our kingdom, the kingdom of monsters. The way he trails off when he says the kingdom makes it seem like the game is hinting that he was going to say something else instead of the kingdom of monsters. In chapter 1, Ralsei revealed what was being hinted at. In Deltarune, Father Alvin is the son of Gerson. Gerson is dead in Deltarune. This is his grave. A hammer is used to represent him. In chapter 2, you can speak to Father Alvin. He doesn't say anything too interesting. However, when you walk away, this happens. The hammer represents Gerson. The hammer represents Gerson. If Father Alvin opened a dark fountain with Gerson's hammer, there could be a darkener like Gerson. By extension, if Gerson's dust was spread onto his hammer prior, we could get a special darkener like I mentioned before. A darkener that could have resembled Gerson at his prime. In Undertale, Gerson was the strongest monster. Not strongest in the underground, but the strongest monster that ever lived. Gerson was the Hammer of Justice. Undyne was inspired by this and got the name Spear of Justice. By extension, she could have been inspired by the way Gerson looked, which could be the reason she wears knight-like armor. So to put it simply, Gerson inspired Undyne's name. The king communicated with the knight. If Gerson is the Roaring Knight, if Undyne was inspired by Gerson, the king could have been inspired as well. There's many hints to some sort of entity representing an angel appearing in Deltarune. There's a mention of the angel's heaven. Heaven is typically referred to as light related. It could be possible that when saying heaven, they're talking about the light world. What causes bad stuff to happen in Deltarune is the balance between light and dark shifting. We have seen this happen by dark fountains being made, but this could also happen if a hypothetical light fountain was made as well. Noelle is referred to by Spamton as an angel. Noelle mentions growing big angel wings. In one of Undertale's anniversaries, we get a Christmas scene from Undertale. Asgore mentions Rudy and how close he was with him, but he mentions how Rudy got sick and died. In Chapter 2, Noelle had no reason to make a dark fountain and escape reality. However, with Rudy's death, it could prompt Noelle to want to escape reality leading to the creation of a light fountain. Gerson mentions how the wings with the circle symbolize, quote, something else. But I don't think they're wings. The Dark World has a late motif for dreams. For example, Chris's bed in the Light World has no trophies except for Azrael. However, in the Dark World, Chris's bed has trophies. The Dark World represents Chris's dreams, 
The dark world may also be related to actual dreams as well. As I mentioned earlier, if you go to bed, you can go to the dark world. Queen mentions how Noelle creating a dark fountain in the dark world is slipping into a darker dream. At Gerson's memorial, which is a bench, he mentions how most of his stories came from dreams. And for an extra touch, Toby Fox has said that the entire idea of Deltarune came from 2011, when during a fever, he had a dream about Deltarune's ending. Ever since then, the thing that pushed Toby Fox forward was making that ending a reality. Even though I think I've explained these theories well, there's more to them than what I just mentioned. That's just the result of putting so many theories into one video. Some theories can even be their own standalone video. I'll spend time here to clarify on some theories that I listed. I don't really think the entity is the direct reason for the time loop. I think it's more likely the entity is the reason for the world being destroyed to the point where the time loop is merely a consequence of that. The time loop is more likely to be something that isn't from the entity. I think the mirror is equally as likely to be the knight as Gerson. It's very interesting how this is in quotation marks, like it's something somebody said. It's said that Sans and Papyrus just showed up one day. So it's possible that Papyrus did come with Sans after all. As Gore, who is the final boss of the game but not really, fights you 5 sevenths into Undertale. Just like how in the chess theory, you fight the knight 5 chapters in out of 7. Also, because of this Phantom Sweepstakes event, it is 100% confirmed that Darkners are based on the emotional bond that Liners make with them. Deltrin will completely recontextualize Undertale. This is awesome, but it also means that it will decanonize most of Undertale's fan content. For example, because Kara isn't the one you sell your soul to, this isn't canon. Because Sans is from Deltarune, this isn't canon. There will be many more examples of this when Deltarune fully releases. For my final message, I'd like to say the reasons I put these theories here are more for fun than legitimacy. So don't take it to heart when the reality is different, or the theories are close but not quite. There are only two chapters out right now after all. Now, it's time to sleep. Oh my god, I finished it! Oh! Oh. Oh my god. Oh, I forgot to stop recording. <sighs>